Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Let's Chat with Dr. Celeste MD. I'm your host, Dr. Celeste Reese Willis. I'm your board certified family medicine physician uh, with over 17 years of urgent care experience. I help busy professionals to find acute and chronic healthcare solutions for both. Uh, their acute medical needs as well as chronic medical needs through my concierge medicine program as well as my telemedicine program. Uh, thanks so much for joining guys. Hi Miss Harris, thanks for joining. Hey Miss Sandra, hi, how are you? I hope you're doing well. Um, so came on to, uh, this evening guys just to give you a little bit of an update about the latest on the coronavirus. Hey Miss Bryant, thank you so much for joining us. Um, so I thought that we'd do a review especially with um, the governor of our state, Governor Ivey, just getting done uh, with uh, announcing the stay-at-home order for our state um, and, and as well as having the conference that was talking about and the newer information, I'm sorry, from the CDC where they were discussing the use of masks or actually using a covering when you go out in public. So I thought that we'd hop on tonight to have a little bit of a discussion about those things. I also wanted to share some information with you guys about groceries. Uh, we were on CBS uh, yesterday afternoon on the five o'clock lunch, I think, and we talked a little bit about some of the things that are important when considering going to the grocery store. So I wanted to go in a little bit more detail about that here. And in addition to that, I wanted to share this with you because I'm not sure sometimes when um, I'm going through my day. There's certain things that come to my mind that I want to share with you or things that you can keep in mind centered around helping to mitigate the spread of this virus. So uh, let's start with that. So first we're going to start with this business with the mask. Okay. So one of the things, and you know, guys, we're talking about the uh, novel coronavirus, COVID-19. We've been sharing information with you about this virus over the last several months. Um, and about the different things that we can do to help decrease or mitigate the risk of spread, those things still hold true. We're just kind of adjusting those things. And as this virus proceeds and as we diagnose more and more patients with it or able to follow them through their course of illness, we learn a little bit more about, okay, this is what has happened in this particular patient. And so as those things and as that information comes about, the CDC as well as the State Health Department will release more information that will help you be able to make better decisions while you're at home. I hope that everybody's having a good time at home quarantine, by the way. Uh, or trying to have a good time at home, uh, by the way, and choosing some activities that will help increase and elevate your mood. I uh, hope that everyone was able to get out today and take a walk. It was very sunny outside, great way to get some exercise in, increase your immunity, as well as vitamin D. Uh, but you wanna make sure that when you are going outside, you're definitely following the social distance measures we've been encouraging you guys to follow in the last several weeks. Now is a very critical time to make sure that we're definitely following all of these things and following the stay at home order and not leaving only for those essential things. So let's talk about the cloth mask. So what they've recommended at this point, the CDC is recommending that everyone, if they have to leave their home, that they wear a cloth mask. Now we in the state of Alabama are under a stay at home order. Um, and most states, I'm sorry, most states are having that same uh, most states are having that same uh, order at this point. And so I'm sorry, there's some background noise, so it distracted me for a moment. But what they're trying to get at with the mask is that they want a barrier to protect others from breathing and talking because what they had discovered is that there's a respiratory droplet that may be released when we talk and when we breathe and when we cough and when we sneeze, we knew about the coughing and sneezing, but there's a respiratory droplet that is released. Uh, a lot of times when people talk, or can be, especially if you're in that close distance, so that's why people that are, that are practicing the social distancing may be having better uh, results with decreasing the risk of their spread. So now they're talking about a barrier, wearing a barrier when you leave your home to help protect you from spreading it if you should have it and or to protect other people. Because you are, po it's possible for you to spread the virus while being asymptomatic. That is the reason that, part of the reason why they're making this recommendation. So we know that it's a viral pathogen that's uh, spread in the throat and the mouth. Uh, we know that that's where the virus is primarily, right? So when you cover your throat and you cover your mouth, you decrease the risk of that virus spreading from that area. Now, 
One of the things that we can champion is there are a lot of people that are at home. I've seen it all over Facebook. Um, the community is coming together and there are people that are making masks uh, to provide a barrier. Now, this form of mask, the homemade mask, is not something that we typically would recommend for someone that's in a hospital setting. We, because there's certain filters and barriers that come with the masks that are needed uh, for healthcare professionals. So what the CDC is recommending, what the health department is recommending at this point, is for you to wear a cloth covering but not an N95 mask. Those masks still need to be reserved for healthcare professionals that are having direct one-on-one -on -one contact with people that may be positive with COVID in the hospital setting. So they're not suggesting that you go out or try to go on Amazon or anywhere and buy these N95 masks because the healthcare professionals, we definitely still need those so we can help keep everyone safe, right? Right, so they're not suggesting that. Um, if you are know that you're going out and leaving the house and going to a place where there's increased risk of you running into the virus, let's say a clinic or somewhere else, you wanna make sure you wear that mask. They're also suggesting some people to wear a gown. The reason they're suggesting that is because we know that the virus can live on surfaces, and if you touch those surfaces, you can pick up the virus and bring it back home with you. That is why they're suggesting that, okay? So that's the deal with the mask. So the N95 masks, we're gonna leave those for, and people that are, and people that are in uh, the hospital setting. That's what we're gonna do with the mask. So, next topic, groceries. When you get ready to go do your grocery shopping, uh, and right now people should only be going out for only essential things that they need, um, only the essentials. So, knowing that you should be going out for only the essentials means that beforehand you're gonna make a list, okay? First and foremost, if you're in a household where you have two adults, let's make a plan. Let's have one person be the runner if we can. If you have children, try to keep them at home. We do not recommend you taking children out into this environment um, unless there's absolutely no other option. Now, try to make one runner in the home if you can so that it's only one person that's being exposed. If you have to go to the store, if you have a cloth or a bandana or something you can wear, great, put that on. If you have gloves, we hesitantly, you don't need gloves. Really, the gloves are like a Petri dish, which is part of the reason why most physicians don't recommend that, hey, you wear gloves, because a lot of times people don't realize, you know, if you haven't used gloves over a period of time as a healthcare professional, I know that when the minute I get done interacting with a patient or touching a surface or doing something, I have to get rid of the gloves. The gloves are like a Petri dish. So you definitely want to be careful if you're using them and making sure that you throw them away and washing your hands immediately immediately after you take them off. When we see patients in practice, when we take our gloves off, one of the first things I do in any procedure and after interacting with a patient is washing my hands. And that's because I know that I've been in an environment where I could have had something infectious and don't wanna pass it along to another patient. So constantly changing gloves and washing hands. Now, if you don't have gloves, no issue. Please do not go out and buy or, or order gloves. It's better to wash your hands anyway, right? Right. So. You're gonna make a list, have one runner, and when you get to the grocery store, if you have wipes or some kind of disinfectant, make sure you wipe off your cart. Wipe off the bottom of your cart because we know that this virus can live on certain surfaces, right? For you know hours and days at a time. We know that it you know exists in the air for several hours at a time. Exactly how long, we don't know, but we know it's at least three hours that it lives in the air. We know that it lives on some metal surfaces for days at a time. So you want to make sure that you, you know, wipe it off before you put your food and items there. Put your food and items, pay for them. When you get home, if you have gloves on, throw them away outside. Do not take the petri dish of gloves into your home. That's like taking the coronavirus, basically, into your home, and we don't want to do that. So. We want to make sure that we get rid of those gloves if you have them. I hope that you're not using them. The first thing you want to do is wash your hands. Then bring your groceries into your pre-assigned area or table that you have uh, that you're going to disinfect your groceries. And yes, you have to disinfect your groceries. Easy way to do it though, you know, Dawn dishwasher, you know, make a little, um, some dishwashing water, Dawn dishwashing liquid, little bit of Lysol or a little bit of leach in the water, you're gonna take a washcloth and literally wipe off all of your groceries. This is gonna to help to disinfect them one at a time. You want to do this before you place the groceries into your cabinet. You wanna do this before you put the groceries into your refrigerator. You definitely want to do that, okay? 
um, something very important to do. And what you're remembering is that you've been touching on things and there are other people that have been touching those groceries as well. And we know it can live on surfaces for days at a time. So we want to make sure that we mitigate that risk. Now, you're going to wash your hands again. You're going to really make sure you wash your veggies, fruits, produce really, really, really well. Wash them really well before you put them away. And then you're going to wash your hands again. You're going to make sure when you come inside, you take off your clothes, put them in the washroom, and that we're washing them and not wearing the clothes that you've been outside in or been to the store in or been in an area wherein you could have coronavirus on you. You don't want that to sit in your home, right? No, we don't want that, right? So, last thing with the mail, because this is something that a lot of people know this. I've mentioned this before. Some people may not recall, but um, with the mail, you want to make sure we know that it can live on a paper surface. We know for a few days at a time, so we want to make sure that we are clearing that surface as well. And I would do the same thing with the handling of your mail and handling of packages, making sure that you've washed your hands afterwards. Don't just pick up a box and open it and then, you know, touch you know, your eye, your nose, your mouth, because the entry points, remember, we've talked about this repeatedly, our eyes, our nose, our mouth, our eyes, our nose, our mouth. Those are the entryway points. So these are the areas we want to protect. It's very easy to forget that you haven't washed your hands and touch your eyes, scratch your eye, your head, your nose, anything, right? So one of the things that's gonna help with this part is this: what the constant washing of our hands. Now, the times that you want to especially remember to wash your hands, never ever put anything in your mouth unless you wash your hands first. Because you don't know what surfaces you may have touched, right? And you don't want to put something in your mouth when you've touched a surface that could have had some of the virus on it. So making sure that you wash your hands before you eat anything every time, I would encourage you to do that. You want to make sure the first thing you do when you come into the house is that you wash your hands no matter where you're coming out from, even if you're outside in your backyard because you're touching a door handle, the same door handle you may have touched when you went outside to get your groceries or go to your car or take a walk or do something else. Make sure you also remember to wash your hands when you go outside and get your mail. Most uh, post office workers are wearing gloves when they deliver the mail, but still, you know, different people touch mailboxes, we don't know. Best to just wash your hands after you've come from outside. So after we eat, before we eat, we're gonna wash our hands. After we've come in from outside, anytime we've coughed or sneezed, we're gonna make sure that we wash our hands. And we're gonna make sure we do it before we eat. Those are the really, really important times you wanna make sure. Other areas you wanna make sure you hit, we highlighted this before, anytime, you know, headphones, AirPods, your beats, you wanna make sure you repeatedly clean those. Refrigerator door handles, right? remote controls as well as the kitchen sink handle and even the coffee maker because the coffee maker is one thing that we sometimes don't think about so you want to make sure that you've washed your hands after touching these after touching certain surfaces and making sure that you repeatedly clean the surfaces i just meant, mentioned the headphones refrigerator door handles remote controls uh kitchen uh, sink handle as well as the coffee maker so uh, I think that about gets it. We talked about the groceries and our process for that. We talked about the mask and we're not going to order N95 masks. We're going to get a cloth covering to wear when we go outside. What is vital is the social distancing. We have to flatten the curve and we all need to work together to help to make that happen. And we can do that. That is something that feel empowered. Know that you can make a difference. You can help decrease the risk of spread of this disease. And that's the purpose of us doing this is to try to empower you and show you that this is not something that you have to be crippled to or be scared of or be fearful of. Uh, God does not give us the spirit of fear. Uh, there are ways and things that we can do to help mitigate the risk of spread of this. And us combining together as a community is what's going to help get us through this. So I encourage you to follow these measures. Uh, if you're out there and you're feeling it, sick, it, sick or ill, I'm sorry, talking too fast. I'm sick or ill, please make sure that you consult a physician. If you do not have a physician and need any kind of telemedicine consult, that is a service I'm more than happy to provide. You can visit my website. It's in the chat. Um, 
if you're having symptoms and you're concerned that you should be seen or shouldn't be seen, I encourage you to make sure you make that telemedicine visit. Try to do the telemedicine visit first. That's what's going to help decrease the risk of spread. If you're in a situation where you're like, uh, we've got to take someone to the doctor, then make sure that you decrease the number of people that are going to that urgent care clinic. You know, don't take your whole family to an urgent care clinic. I really, really, really want to make sure that we impress the importance of that. Take the sick person as well as someone else with them because you a lot of times you need a responsible party if someone's feeling ill because we never know, you know, they may not be able to drive or any of things of that nature, but take someone with you, but don't take a group of six of you to the doctor. When you go outside to exercise, I know it's, you know, um, it's Good Friday, which is a wonderful weekend. There's a lot that's going to be celebrated uh, this weekend, but I encourage you, as people, because I know people are accustomed to getting together this weekend as families, is imperative that we follow the social distancing. We now know or are finding out more evidence to suggest, I'll say, that this may be spread between some persons just by talking and just by speaking. Taking that six foot distance goes a long way to decrease the likelihood of having it spread. The more you get together with more people, then you increase the risk of one of you having it or spreading it. It's asymptomatic, so we don't know when you have it unless you have a test. That means in that 14 day incubation period, you could spread it to someone else and you don't wanna spread it to someone who, um, we don't want to spread it to anyone, but you especially want to make sure you, you don't want to put make yourself be a risk factor for someone that has a more challenging time of fighting off the virus. So, with that, ladies and gentlemen, that's all I had to share. Thank you guys so much for coming on. Hi, Mr. Smith. Hi, Jocelyn. How are you? Inbox me, please, Jocelyn. Uh, hi, Mr. Bates. Hey, Keila. How are you? Uh, hi, Mr. Trammell. Thanks so much for joining. Hey, Coretta. How are you? Hi, Ms. Ratcliffe in Indiana, Bama. He must be in Alabama. Hi, how are you? Thanks so much for joining. Hi, Ms. Taylor. Thank you so much for joining us. Hi, Nene. I hope, did you do your concert yet? Please let me, I hope I didn't miss you singing. I pray I didn't miss you singing with all the updates. I had some consults earlier. Hi, Ms. Morris uh, and Ms. Hamill. Thank you for joining. And Ms. Manuel. Hey, Auntie Jean, my aunt is joining from uh, San Antonio. Hi, Felicia. Thank you so much for your help today. I appreciate you. And hey, Laquita, thank you so much for joining. So, guys, that's all I have. Is there anyone, if there's anyone that has any questions, I'm going to hang on for a second. Okay, Nina, can you please tag me when you go on to sing? And if, by the way, you guys, if you would like some inspiration, my sister, Nitra Young, who's in the chat, is a phenomenal individual, minister of music, songstress, um, Definitely is going to minister and help to uplift our mood and give us a reason to look to God uh, For it to be the solution and as the ultimate healer So she's going to minister in music hopefully tonight I'm going to share it on my page So please take a moment to listen to it. It will bless you immeasurably. You have no idea um, So thank you Nene for doing that. Hey Jada. Thank you so much for joining. That's my sister um, who we've been in conference calls all day so guys i don't know does anyone have any questions that i can answer i'm going to start trying to do a little question and answer um afterwards to make sure try to see if there are any issues that anyone has that i'm able to answer i can't give medical advice in this facet i have to do that in a consult but if there are any general questions that anyone has i'd be more than happy uh to answer those questions hi miss gilkey thanks so much for joining hi miss jones um so if no one has any questions, oh, Sabrina Daniel. Thank you, Sabrina, for reminding my sister to join us <laughs> tonight. So um, thank you so much listening all the way from uh, Atlanta. So that's all I have, guys. We'll keep you updated. So she said, I'm a nurse. She'll share the information. Okay, awesome, awesome, awesome. Um, so we just want to make sure, I want to make sure we really, really, really push the point about the mask. Because before, uh, when this first started, the masks were a huge issue, and it's already a huge issue with healthcare professionals. So please don't order the N95 mask and just use the cloth covering. Um, and they're recommending, and hopefully we don't need to use it because we won't be leaving our house often. So my sister's asking, should I wear wear a mask everywhere? So the answer to that question is, we're only going to leave for essential things like going to the grocery store. Or let's say you have something happen in your home, a pipe burst or something like that where you have to go get something uh, for home management or maintenance in terms of an emergency 
not uh, just you know wanting to do a new garden or something like that. Um, if you do have to go out, I do recommend that you do that because this virus is living in the air for up to three hours. So when, when we are in different places, if it's living there for three hours, and let's say, you know, we know people that are asymptomatic that have it. So if you are in that space where someone has coughed or sneezed, that droplet can live in the air for up to three hours. And let's say you get there at two hours and 45 minutes. If you breathe in enough of that droplet, it is possible for you to get it. So I would recommend that you wear a covering um, uh, over your nose and your mouth. Uh, and again, a second reason why we're recommending it is also so that in case there are people that are out there that aren't having symptoms that have it though, that we're preventing them from spreading it to other individuals as well. Right? Right. Does that make sense? Okay. She says she'll share in Colorado. Oh, thank you so much. You guys stay safe up there. Um, she said those dying, is it from not being able to breathe? The lungs shut down. Uh, Unfortunately, Ms. Bryant, that is part of the major reason why most people that are succumbing to death as a result of COVID-19, that is the main reason why some of them are not making it. Most of it is respiratory related where they get into respiratory distress. They develop something called ARDS, um, which is, you know, an acute syndrome, respiratory syndrome of distress. When they're not able to get air, there's fluid that kind of can build up in the lung as well and not allow that the exchange for them to get oxygen to flow as well. So unfortunately, yes ma'am, that is uh, one of the main reasons why people are succumbing with this. Oh, my mom is there. Hey mommy, how are you? Is there any treatment? So, Ms. Jones, so to answer that question, uh, as far as the treatment goes, now, I will hit on this, especially because a lot of people are doing telemedicine and I know that there's been a lot verbalized about a question that was asked to me today, as a matter of fact, uh, from one of my patients was, hey, Dr. Celeste, what do you think about Zithromax and the malarial treatment drug, hydrochloroquine? So, number one, that is not a drug that I prescribe. It is not something that is standard treatment. It is a drug that is under investigation and being utilized at this point by UAB. They're doing a study with it. They are utilizing it in some patients as there have been some studies that have been done overseas in both China, Italy, and other countries that are sharing their information and their surveillance data with us. So when they're doing is seeing how patients respond and there are so patients that are in the hospital may be being treated with that it is not approved as an out outpatient treatment for sure it is not a drug that i've prescribed in the last few weeks that uh, we've had a pickup in uh, patients coming in wanting evaluation and or patients that are even that we've been treating through telemedicine that have been positive for covid because we have been treating some patients that have been positive but it's not a standard regimen and it's not something that has been approved, federally approved as part of treatment. Coronavirus is a virus, but there are complications that you can get like bronchitis and like pneumonia. Um, and so the Zithromax and the anti-malarial drug treatment is being used targeted at that particular aspect. And the pneumonia component is bacterial, but the virus itself is viral. So most people that are actually positive for coronavirus actually do not need Zithromax and the hydrochloroquine. They don't need that. That's an anti-malarial drug. It's a very, very strong drug. It's something that's been around for years, but it also there are side effects that occur when you take certain medicines. So it's best to not take it unless it's under the supervision of a physician and they feel like, okay, this is something that you have to have to have. Um, so that's the deal with, uh, is there any treatment? There's a lot of research that's being done uh, in terms of trying to develop a vaccine. Uh, they already have a vaccine that they're out and they're studying and doing a lot of research about at this point. Um, but there's not a definitive treatment yet. But for any virus, the treatment usually is what we call supportive, which means plenty of fluids, take Tylenol. We're not doing ibuprofen. We're not doing ibuprofen, Motrin, Advil or Aleve in patients that we suspect have COVID. We're not doing that because it causes what's called a cyto cytokine storm. And that's something we did a, 
a live about that a couple of weeks ago, which is basically like an inflammatory reaction that happens sometimes when people that uh, have this particular virus take the ibuprofen. It's something that's being studied and being researched still to this point. Okay. Yes, it's a huge inflammatory reaction. My sister put that in the chat. She's a physician as well. Um, Ms. Barnes, let's see if there are any other questions. Oh, Judah said, hi, hi, Judah. Hi, London, hi, Lila. Hey, Harley, hey, Zoe. Just saying hey to my little nieces and nephews. They were looking at me on the little FaceTime and probably like, too, Leslie, why aren't you saying hey to me? So just speaking to them. Um, Yes, it is a drug that's used to treat rheumatoid arthritis. Thank you, Miss Lewis. So she's bringing the, the reason why she's bringing up the point about the rheumatoid arthritis is because there were a rash of people that went to physicians and or nurse practitioners to be prescribed the anti-malarial drug. And they were prescribed. It's also something that's used to treat rheumatoid arthritis and some autoimmune conditions. So because there was a, a large amount of people that went out and improperly, you know, got prescriptions filled for these medicines, it took away the supply of medicines for people that have lupus and rheumatoid arthritis that need this medicine. It's like a daily regimen medicine that they need to keep their attacks at bay. It's imperative that anyone with any comorbidities, autoimmune issues, heart disease, diabetes, asthma, very important that all of these people are taking all of their medicines. Make sure that you're calling and checking on your older, you know, your aunts and uncles, grandparents, parents, and making sure that they have their meds, making sure that they're okay. Um, because what happened with this is that they bought all the medicine, and so what ended up happening is there were a lot of people that were sent into flares because they couldn't get their regular medicine because they're healthy people that wanted to keep a stock of medicine to treat corona in case they got it at their home, which is not appropriate and which is not good at all. But um, so that's why we're not, uh, or at least Dr. Celeste is not prescribing that treatment because I'm not treating people inpatient uh, at this time and it's not being recommended uh, by our state health department, nor by the CDC, nor by the research and doctors at uh, UAB. So we will not be doing that. Um, let's see, and they take it for lupus as well. Okay, hey Benji, how are you? Okay, how can we tell the difference between pollen, allergies, and COVID? Okay. Hi, Ms. Holland, thanks for the question. So, and we did a live, I did a live on this a couple of weeks ago, so you can go to my page to get a little bit more detail about it. I'm not gonna go into as much detail now, because I've been on here now, I don't know how long, um, and I don't want to, um, I don't wanna get away from what our topic is today too much, but the difference, so if you're someone that has seasonal allergies, the symptoms kind of overlap a little bit. So if you're someone that has seasonal allergies, you normally have like nasal congestion, sneezing. People that have seasonal allergies, you know who you are. At this time of the year when things are blooming, you start getting congested, you get all of that. Well, people that are having symptoms of COVID tend to have fever, cough, and chest pain or shortness of breath. So if it's allergies, you will not be having a fever. If it's allergies, you can get a little bit of a cough or a, <clears throat> a little post-nasal drip from the back of the throat that makes you cough a little bit. You can get that, but what you won't get uh, is a fever, and you shouldn't be feeling short of breath necessarily from your allergies unless you're an asthma patient or unless you have seasonal allergies, and let's say you go outside and you cut the grass and you're allergic to grass, weeds, pet dander, those kind of things. So that may make you have symptoms. I encourage you, though, for people that are the chronic allergy sufferers, if you're a physician, if you're under the care of a physician and they have you on a regimen, then I encourage you to take those meds as prescribed by your physician. Doing your maintenance medicine is so important right now, is so, so important, because we don't want a patient that has a history of heart disease or has a history of diabetes or high blood pressure to have your blood pressure increase and then you're at risk you know, for having a stroke or a heart attack or exhibit symptoms, and then we have concern to know, hey, do we have to have this person go to the hospital? And this is a non-COVID person, so we don't want anyone to have to go to the hospital, and then that puts more of a strain on the hospital environment in the emergency room and the hospitals, which are already overloaded. So we, as the physicians that are treating patients on an outpatient basis, as well as telemedicine, are trying to help relieve some of the burden that's on the emergency room, uh, as well as on the hospital. And in trying to do so, we're just encouraging our patients 
uh, as a primary care physician to make sure that you're getting your maintenance meds on board. So if there's a question of that, go ahead and call your physician, get a telemedicine appointment. If you don't have a physician and not sure that you can get a telemedicine appointment, feel free to call me. The um, federal guidelines have been uh, decreased so that they are allowing us as physicians to practice across state lines. So we've been seeing patients you know, all over the country at this point for the past couple of weeks since that measure was taken. Um, and so Ms. Holland says her friends have been freaking out. Okay, so tell them that we're not gonna freak out because we don't have a spirit of fear. We're gonna empower ourselves and stay, con and stay in control and stay at peace. And um, just make sure that we follow these measures and make sure that with the safest people in America right now, you wanna know who those are? The